Bible for many, many problems. I use the advanced support, uh, custom support for all my laminated shoes. The shoe that I'm presently using, the concept and principle was uh, designed by Gene Obenick. I have modified it to some degree to uh, fit my standard of, of application. His, his basic concept describes a shoe that has breakover at the point of rotation, which is almost directly beneath the point of uh, P3. You have a slight rail, it depends on how much you derotate it. If you derotate heavily, you need a heavier rail, of course. The rail sets on the medial and lateral branches of the shoe to allow enhancement of breakover in that direction. And of course, breakover is perpendicular to the axis of the frog, which would be here, making it a very meaningful shoe. The modifications that I've, I've put on it is I use the putty from the inside all the way out. I have discontinued use of the, the wedge pad and the insert because uh, of ease of application and also it has increased the, the amount of flexibility that I can have with the shoe. I use gutter guard, which is a plastic screen. You also have a, a metal mesh, aluminum mesh, that works very well. And I will nail this under the shoe as a grid work for the putty. And just simply cut that out. This gutter guard can be purchased almost any hardware store. Kmart carries it, all discount stores carry it. It goes in your gutter to keep the leaves out. It works very nicely as a nail-on pad to secure this composite, even in horses that are in light exercise. So just make it fit about like that. Some other principles of this shoe, it's very important to pull the shoe back so the breakover is going to be approximately three quarters of an inch in front of the point of frog. Also, the, shoe or the front surface of the shoe must be concave so you have absolutely no contact to the sole surface in this area. Always be sure to mix it until all the, the white is gone out of the mixture because those areas of, that are not mixed well will separate. I take approximately half of that, lay it on the foot, stand away from from the apex, take my double layer screen, lay it over, press it into the putty. Place my shoe on, press it down so I do not have a lot of putty under the shoe. Take the remainder and I use it to mold into the back. It's always best to have a little excess because it's very easy to trim off what you don't have. The principle here is I want to, to bring ground contact to the frog and sulci. You don't have to worry about nailing the shoe, but constantly be checking your shoe for a fit. By the time I come along and trim my excess screen, this makes nailing a little easier. It's beginning to set now, so I can go ahead and nail. Once again, put your hand down there so you see just how much heat you're putting on the system. As you can see, it's still, it's still setting up. It's quite soft. I begin to push a little excess out the back. I do not like to see them push a lot of excess out the back because as the weight goes on, the sole, the sulci, and the frog will, will become some bit convex. I like to create the arch support as high as possible. I'll have better luck that way. Any excess then, once it's set up, if it's pushed up a little above the level of the shoe, I just simply come back. Trim it off, removing more out over the, over the apex. You can actually create a nice frog, leaving no contact in this area whatsoever. You have a nice good flexible frog that has contact from ground surface all the way to the interface of the frog. This particular shoe can be worn for six to eight weeks. I use this application for, for problems other than laminitis. 
Then sold horses, club footed horses. Horses that have very poor circulation in the anterior part of the foot. The mechanism of the issue has become extremely helpful. And I'm very grateful for those who have helped me understand the mechanics of the issue. And, and there's not a day goes by that I don't realize another use for the application of this breakover. Notice with this shoe, I have a lot of toe hanging over the front of the shoe. You do not have to take that off in a square fashion. Just simply take it off at the same angle you can grab. It's the same angle as the ground surface of the shoe. This way your horse does not have a square toe. He only has a square break over. All types of modifications can be made using this technique. I'm going to slip this shoe off now for demonstration purposes. Just show you what the underside looks like. And there we are. You have a mirror image of this horse's foot. This particular pad can be used several times over. You see it's not attached to the shoe. I've got a very thick wedge. Zoom right up on that a little talk closer. I have a very thick wedge. I have flexibility. It's not stiff. It's a very flexible apparatus. I have a lot of contact. I have nothing out over the apex. And it fits in nice and snug. I've also used this configuration as a tape on. Gives you a lot of good arch support, and you can tape it on with the bandage technique that I just demonstrated previously. You have your wedge, you have your breakover. It's very simple to use this application even in the absence of the shoe. Now, the next shoe that I use it with extensively is the four point shoes. You can see the breakover is basically the same. The branches, the medial and lateral, have been ground out. So we have enhanced the medial out of breakover. It's a very light shoe. It's used for training horses. You simply put the screen over. You can use the, the nylon screen, or you can use aluminum screen. You can double it, put half of it in, press it into the sock out of the frog, spread it out over to get a rim pad effect. Place your screen on. Press it down firmly, as you can see the putty is coming through the nail holes. You take the rest of your putty and you fill it in over the top of the screen. It's going to break over to approximately three quarters inch in front of the point of frog. I have good medial lateral break over. I've got ground support. I've got arch support. You can be artistic, put your nice little cleft in for the frog. You're ready to nail. Another application is with bar shoes. I use it under most all my bars, where it's a Z bar egg bar, square bar, simply place it over the sock eye of the frog, place your bar on, push down quite firmly, pinch off any excess that you want. And you're ready to nail. 